Hello everyone, I'm Jensen, your digital content producer. It is Wednesday, August 12th, and I'm about to get you all caught up on today's top headlines. So we're gonna take a look at some walleye favorites who are getting back on the ice and two local girls who are being called heroes. So a lot of exciting stuff to get through today. But before we do that, I want to take you through some of the updated coronavirus data just to get it out of the way. Now, the bad news here is that we are slightly up across the board. In the last 24 hours, there were 1,422 new cases reported compared to that 21-day average of 1,215. Hospitalizations also seem to be up quite a bit with 141 new admissions. That average is just 97 there, but deaths and ICU admissions aren't too far off the 21 day average. Over the last 24 hours, there were 26 new deaths reported compared to 24, and ICU admissions were at 22 with a 21 day average at 16. Now, of course, as the pandemic continues, people are starting to get curious about what the November election could look like, especially after the chaos that was Ohio's primary. Now. We are starting to get a better idea of what to expect. Ohio's elections chief sent out some health and safety guidelines that stated that while masks are highly encouraged, they are not being mandated for in-person voting. So Secretary of State Frank LaRose said that nothing, including virus and skepticism about mail-in voting will stop the election, promising that it will remain safe and secure. Leroux said that he is strongly encouraging masks for in-person voters to prevent the spread of COVID-19, but believes that any official requirement would step on people's right to vote. And voters who don't wear masks will have some unique options here, including voting outside or using the curbside option. However, LaRose did make clear that anyone who does want to vote normally in person uh, in the building can do so even if they're not wearing a mask. But some important things to remember here are that poll workers are desperately needed right now. I think they're looking for 35,000. So if that's something that you're interested in or comfortable doing, just go online, fill out a form on ohiosos.gov. And an important date to know is that the last day to register for voting is October 5th with early voting starting the very next day. So get registered, be prepared, get that done early. But let's zero in on some local news now. Toledo police are trying to identify this guy, and it's actually a really bizarre and kind of scary story. The man you see apparently knocked on the door of a home on West Alexis yesterday, and when the resident asked who was there, he responded, and then police say he appeared to reach for a gun. Thankfully, after realizing the resident wasn't going to open the door, the guy just left. Now, if you recognize this person or if you have any information on the incident, you're asked to call Crime Stopper at 419-255-1111. And while we are on the topic of Toledo Police, I do have some sad news that I need to share today. Representatives with the department said that one of their own, Sergeant John Palmer, has died. Now, it is unclear when or how he died. An official comment hasn't been made by TPD just yet out of respect for the family and for the whole department as they grieve right now. But we will keep you updated on this as more information is made available. But let's shift a little bit here and look at a really encouraging story out of Fulton County. Two local girls are being called heroes after they saved a little boy who was drowning. Police say the seven-year-old had wandered away from his house and ended up in a neighbor's pond. The girls were riding their bikes when they noticed that he was struggling. They immediately went off to find help and their quick thinking saved the boy's life. The girls were honored for their heroic efforts with a civilian award certificate from the Metamora Fire Department. And two fish favorites are officially back in Toledo. Toledo Walleye head coach Dan Watson announced today that veterans Shane Bershback and Kyle Bonus have signed an agreement for the 2020-21 season. T-Town Hockey! I was saying that. Now, let's look at some stats here. The dynamic duo returns to the pond with a combined 563 points over six seasons. Bershback holds the Walleye record at 376 for the most games played during the regular season. Last season, he tallied 20 goals with 43 assists in 56 games. And in addition to representing the Walleye more times than any other player, Bershback is the club's regular season career leader with 277 assists and 393 points while tallying the most goals with 116. And Bonus is entering his sixth season with Toledo. The Lindsay, Ontario native is currently third among Walleye players for the most goals with 95, beat only by Shane Bershback, of course, and Evan Rankin. And the 32 games he played for the Fish in the 2019 20 
2020 season. 5'11", 185 pound forward, earned 24 points with 12 goals and 12 assists. And one more bit of fun news before I get the heck out of here. It's been all over social media, but in case you're not hip to the trends, this September, for three nights only, you can rent out the last blockbuster in Bend, Oregon, on Airbnb. They've turned the middle of the store into a living room complete with a pull-out couch, VCRs, of course, and more movies than you can even watch in your stay. Movie lovers in groups of four can rent out the store on September 18th, 19th, and 20th. The listing goes live at 1 p.m. Pacific time, so that's 4 p.m. our time to keep that in mind on Monday, August 17th. And it'll barely cost you more than a movie rental itself. It's only $4 a night, so you can't get much better than that. But that is all I have for you today. If you have questions, feel free to drop them below. I'll do my best to answer them. And for more of your day's top headlines, make sure you catch our newscasts at 5, 6, and 11 on, of course, Channel 11. And if you want to get updates on when I'm doing these, feel free to like the video and hit subscribe. You'll get an alert so you know when I'm going live. But with all of that being said, I hope you have a happy Wednesday. <laughs>